Hey guys, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and today's video is all about this article that's come out from PC Gamer about Trackmania. How they're going to change the subscription model after quote unquote blatantly realizing it was too generous and it has to be realistic. Oh boy. Here we go with another company uh, just destroying their own game. Um, this is going to be awful. I'm sure of it. So I haven't read this yet. I've only seen the title and wanted to give my true thoughts on it as we read through it together. So be sure we understand that many of you have become accustomed to playing the full campaign for free. Oh boy, that's a great opening statement. I'm just kidding. That's sarcasm. Okay, I make the text bigger for you guys. There we go. Developer Nadio. Nadio? Nadio? Has announced changes. What is with game companies having weird names that I don't know how to pronounce? Like C-I-E. Is it C or C-I-E? Do you say the letters? Anyway, sorry. Um, developer Nadio has announced changes to the Trackmania business model following the 2020 game's recent re-release on console. Its iter this iteration of Trackmania was something of a soft reboot for the series, heavily based on Trackmania Nations. I'll explain that in a moment, and arrived with a free-to-play business model under which players could access a bunch of the game's features for free and subscribe to access additional community content such as standard access costing around $10 a year and club access costing $25 a year. I pay for club access, really freaking pointless. I should just go down to standard. Um, so heavily based off Trackmania Nations. Trackmania 2020 is Trackmania Nations, just with some physics tweaks, uh, new um, track pieces that they continually update and add like for new physics and stuff like that. And it's gotten a little bit too arcadey for my liking. Um, but it's the same car with a couple new little additions like rocket boosters from the wheels and stuff like that. It's... It's basically just like a DLC update to Trackmania Nations. Uh, previous Trackmania games like Trackmania Canyon was just a single canyon environment. Trackmania United was every single environment Trackmania 1 and Trackmania Sunrise had all in one game. And Nations, I believe the stadium car was there too. So Trackmania United, in my opinion, is the best Trackmania game they ever made. Because it has island, it has coast, it has bay, it has stadium, it has... In Trackmania 1, I believe, they called it Asian. <laughs> Which would not fly in 2023. <laughs> um, but yeah, it. the fact that Trackmania is nothing more than a user-generated content game that they just kind of give you a platform to build on, it's not much different from Minecraft in my mind. Anyway, let's continue. That model and the fact that you need an Ubisoft account to play, kind of, has inevitably attracted some pushback over the game's life thus far. Though I found it pretty generous and played this latest version without paying anything, three years after release, however, and the game hitting various consoles this May, Nadio has somewhat belatedly announced that it has been too generous and things are going to change. Oh boy, let's find out what changes. In a new post on the game site, Nadio has uh, Nadio says the console release has surpassed our highest expectations in terms of both amount of players and playing time, which means we need to adapt to the quantity of content given for free with the starter access. Adapting to the quantity of content, of course, means it's been giving too much away. There's even what could be considered a slight backhand at the moaners, Nadio says it has... Na oh my god, that's a weird sentence. Nadio says it has to be realistic and compare the situation with efforts made by the studio. The game itself... How do I put this? Ubisoft is being pretty lazy with Trackmania because it knows it's just going to sell anyway because it's such a popular game, especially thanks to 
uh, streamers like um, Virtual. So Virtual, Muda, or Muda, uh, uh, I think that's how you say it. Not Mudahar. Uh, I think his name is Muda um, and a couple other players. Scrappy being a big one too. The game just has a huge following and it knows it's probably going to get away with this regardless. But realistically, all that Ubisoft has done within the last year has been very wishy-washy on rules of third-party content. It's been very wishy-washy on what is and isn't allowed to be used with the game. So like macro-based keyboards were a huge thing, as well as uh, keyboards that came with software like Steel Series keyboards. Uh, come with a software where you can control how much of a key input is put in, just like if you were using a joystick. So a lot of people were using uh, what's called 34% is a meme in the Trackmania world, where for a long time on the ice physics, you could hold steering precisely at 34% with a custom key input, and it would, with a third-party tool, and it would be perfect because 34% you would actually gain speed while sliding on ice. It was just kind of a little exploit built into the game. And I've made a whole video about how I feel about Ubisoft changing the physics over and over and over. And Nadio, I mean, over and over and over um, on ice physics and bobsled to the point that they've literally ruined the environment. But they haven't gone on after other environments that have way more of a difficult skill ceiling or styles of play or that have weird glitches like uh so the thing with ice physics long story short is if you hold you now steering at a certain point you would still accelerate like i was talking about the 34 percent. well they patched that then somebody found this thing called ice wiggling where you would just rhythmically press left and right while you're on a straight, and it would make your car accelerate faster. Not a big deal. That's very similar to, like, if you were on a grass environment or, like, a roadway or a platform, you can do uh, speed drifting, which is way more difficult than wiggling back and forth. It's so dumb how they have heavily policed the physics on ice, but not anything else. It doesn't make any sense to me. So, thus the starter edition of Trackmania, let's get back to this, thus the starter edition of Trackmania, which is free access point, will now give access to the first 10 campaign tracks per season. Each season consists of 25 tracks. The access and access to royal and ranked modes and the community-focused arcade channel. This will apply from winter 2024 update which is due in January. So in January, we will see that update for 2024, and I guess that's when this is going to drop as far as their new payment method. Okay, uh, be sure we understand that many of you have become accustomed to playing the full campaign for free, and we would have preferred to keep it that way. Our primary goal is to keep Trackmania live as long as possible and have to and have it enjoyed by a maximum player from around the world thanks to the right balance for players who play for free and others who are making it possible by paying for two decades. So you can actually pay up front for Trackmania and just like get the club access. And I paid, I think, for two or three years in advance. Um... They're hoping to get two decades out of this game. I don't think that's going to happen. Not at all. I'm detecting a very slight level of petulance from Nadio in the last line, which sympathy for the devil and all that, one can probably let slide. I've played various Trackmania games over the years, and they've always seemed pretty good value for money. I'm not the kind of player who is obsessed about this game, but if I was, the current subscription model doesn't seem... And, and, and our, oh my God, doesn't seem greedy. <laughs> I can't read. Um, and it must be deeply frustrating to provide a game where the majority of content is free for all and get constant 
sniping for daring to change for other part or part charge for other parts. Oh my god, I can't read. As part of the change, the existing standard and club tiers are being merged into a new club access subscription that will be twenty bucks a year. Nadio also notes that the racer's twentieth anniversary hits November and looks forward to players joining in for this incredible milestone though it doesn't seem like any in-game celebration is planned yeah it's really stupid okay so honestly i don't mind that 20 bucks a year that feels a bit much for a game that is largely user generated content um that some people put hundreds if not thousands of hours into making one racetrack that is like 59 seconds long or there are some people that put in time and they make tracks that are five minutes long. Hell, there are some tracks out there that are a couple hours long. Um, there are RPG style tracks, as they're called. I call them platformers um, that are 10, 15 minutes long because you have to like kind of hunt and find the path. The game, I don't think, warrants a $20 a year subscription model. Just let me buy it once. Seriously. Like, if I, if I want to give you 60 bucks, that's three years. I'm probably going to move on by the end of that anyway to a new game. It, I don't know, Trackmania doesn't make sense to me at 20 bucks a year with 90% of the game being user-generated. And all they do is mess with physics way after a patch is already put out and add a couple new blocks here and there, even though players can make their own 3D blocks now. The backdrop to all of this, of course, is Ubisoft, which has owned Natio since 2009. Very unfortunate. But the big bag publisher in this instance just doesn't seem all that bad. Since acquiring Natio, Ubisoft has let the studio focus entirely on making Trackmania games and has content to let the series roll along until now. Players didn't like the existing subscription model and well, be careful what you wish for. Nadio is altering the deal. Pray it doesn't alter it any further. That is true. I'll give the article writer that. Um, if they alter, if they try to alter this any further, it's going to cause problems. People will be, I think, okay, majority of which that play this all the time, they'll be okay with 20 bucks a year. Um, somebody that's a hobbyist like me, uh, maybe I'll be fine with it. Especially if I can like start streaming it and make content out of it. You know what? I'm. It's not actually that bad now that I think about it. But good lord, stop messing with the physics. Put in a little bit more effort and fix a lot of the bugs that are in the game. Not the exploits, the bugs. The exploits are borderline needed at this point, as there's probably 100,000 racetracks that are user-generated, created. And, it, yeah, it, I don't know, man. I think if they try to take this any further, they're making a mistake. But majority of the player base is going to be probably okay with this. I don't know. It just sits kind of wrong with me, but maybe it's just because I'm getting old. I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments down below, and I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, if you want me to make more Trackmania content, let me know. Peace out.